to do is actually work with people to help them find the organizing style or help them come up with plans. When I started uh, professional organizing about five or six years ago, I would go into people's homes and I would help them clean a room, clean an office, you know, kind of create an organizational system. And I seemed to find that it would kind of tend to fall apart once I left. What I started seeing was that I actually needed to teach people how to organize, explain to them what organization is, help them find the organizational style. And uh, that's kind of where these classes started. I taught one a year ago in how to find an organizing style, and it was really successful. People were really inspired by it. And they took it home and were able to then organize and kind of become the organi organized person that they wanted to be. So I thought along those lines, sometimes, you know, whether you're organized or not, we all have projects that we need to plan. We all have things that we want to do, and sometimes it's very difficult to get started. So that's the whole point of this class. We're going to talk a little bit about what program planning is or project planning is, and then we'll kind of take it from there and see what you came with, any of your, you know, things that you're working on that you can't get started with, things that you've started that just aren't progressing, or things that you just don't want to start because you just don't know how to. So that's the whole point of this class. So the class is just going to be in two parts. So I'm going to quickly go over what it means to plan a project, you know, what the steps entail, and then we're going to open it up to the room. I have my own examples, but I'd love to hear from you what you're working on, what you're stuck working on, and maybe as a group, we can kind of come up with ideas together, talk about it, because that's how I do it with clients. I go into someone's home, I assess the situation, we talk about it a bit going back and forth, and then I take all of that information and create a plan for them. Or what I've been doing recently is actually working on the plan with people instead of doing it for them. So does that all make sense to everybody? You're empowering people. Exactly, exactly. I'm giving you the tools that you can organize, you know, become a good organizer. Because everybody can organize. Everyone has the ability to organize. You came here, you have shoes on, I mean, you're <laughs> able to organize yourself. So that's really the whole point, is to empower you with the skills that you have to show you. And sometimes you can kind of get a little stuck, and that's where I come in to kind of guide people, that you're using the right language or giving you the tools that you would need <coughs> to be able to, you know, accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. So what is project planning? The reality is project planning, all it is, is you're breaking something down into manageable steps so you can accomplish your goal. That's all it is. You have a goal, you want to accomplish it, accomplish it, you need a plan to get to that point. So the first thing you actually need to do is choose your goal. Now to some people that sounds easy. Oh, I want to have a more organized home. Well, that's actually too broad of a goal. You're never going to accomplish that. It's too overwhelming and for a lot of people it's very difficult to start. For example, I had an organizing client. She wanted to completely overhaul her home office. So I had a great on paper, I said, look, I went to her office, we assessed it a little bit, I came up with some ideas, and I said, a week from now, we're gonna meet and get together. Well, she canceled on me. The following week, she canceled on me again. Because the idea of organizing is very stressful. It creates a lot of anxiety in people, and I understand that. So I said to her, I said, look, we're not even gonna meet for an hour, we're gonna meet for 15 minutes. I want you to pick five pieces of paper. Just pick five pieces of paper that you wanna deal with. Pick five random pieces of paper, I don't care, just pick, pick those five pieces of paper. I go to her home, we go through it for a couple of minutes, I show her how easy it is, we got rid of a couple of things because everything's on the internet. There was one article that, was, that she really wanted to keep. I said, okay, we're gonna create a file system for the articles that you wanna keep. I said, that's all we're doing today. Next week, we'll do another 15 minutes. Well, the next week that I went, I was there for an hour because she saw that it's not that bad. Sometimes all it takes is just that one, you know, that one thing or those two things to get started. So the goal, what the goal does is keep you, keeps you targeted on what you want to do. So like for example, you don't want to say, I want to cook more. Because anybody can just say, I want to cook more. What you might want to say is, I want to create a pantry so that I have the ingredients around me that would inspire me to cook. Because then that's your goal. Have a more organized pantry. And for some people, just tap, you know, tack it up on a wall, write it somewhere, put it in your phone so you're reminded of it every day to focus on that goal. So the first thing to, to kind of get a plan going is to have that goal. The second thing is to determine the outcome. Now that you have your goal, what is it that you want to do? So, for example, don't start organizing a room if you don't know what the room is going to be for. Don't go into like, you know, a spare bedroom that you've just been throwing everything into and just start purging when you're really not sure what the room is going to be for. So realize that if you're going to organize, you know, say the, the goal is I want to organize this spare bedroom, 
with the outcome being, I want to have a guest room and a place for more storage. Again, keeping yourself focused and not keeping it so wide that it's going to overwhelm you and possibly deter you from wanting to continue. You also need to determine, you need to identify what works and what doesn't. Look, we've all tried to be Martha Stewart at some point. Not all of us can be Martha Stewart. Time, money, resources, we might just not, we might not have those. So know yourself and know what you're able to do. So here I am, a professional organizer. I have a full-time job that I just went to part-time, but I have a 16-year-old, I have a 21-year-old, I have three cats, I have a husband. You know, you're not gonna be able to do everything in a day. So you just have to be realistic. For me, I spend, when I get home from work, 15 to 20 minutes at my desk. That's all I can handle at that point, because then I have the kids in my ear. But that way, at least I have that moment where I know I can look at the mail, empty my pockets from work, go through my notes, you know, and, and I know that about myself. So that's kind of the idea behind finding your own organizing style. You need to, you know, again, be honest with yourself. Do rewards work, give yourself a reward. Does setting a timer work? Set a timer. Read all the articles in the world, get a couple of things. If they work for you, great. If not, then they're not for you and they're not going to work for you. I'm not an alarm person. Alarms don't work for me. I hear an alarm, I'll just turn it off and keep going. So I know that about myself, I'm not going to set an alarm. So once you have your goal and you kind of have an idea of where you want it to go and you understand yourself, the next set is to set the plan. And we're going to go into more detail about that once we actually start looking at your plans. But at least you have the beginning and the end and you know who you are. Those are really great tools right there to have to plan your projects. While you're planning your project, don't forget that you can alter it. Just because something is written down doesn't mean it's you know, you're not going to be graded, you're not going to be held accountable for it. If you're going through a plan and it doesn't work, have you know a, a meeting with yourself and say, okay, I've been trying this for about a month, nothing is happening, let's reassess the plan. You can always reassess the plan. That's the greatest thing about a plan, is that it can always be changed. That's why I like paper. Paper can be thrown out, crossed off, you know, that sort of thing. So once all this is said and done, your plan goes into effect, the one thing you should do at the end is assess what has happened. So say you have a whole house that you want to reorganize, and you've set this plan to just reorganize this one room, making it a nice guest room, and has more storage space. You've done that plan, it's over. Don't throw away your notes. In fact, take some notes afterwards. What worked, what didn't. Then you can actually take this plan and go to the next room, or go to your kitchen, or go to a home office. That's the, the great thing about start, sort of starting project planning is that you can take it from one thing to the next and all of a sudden, it's almost something you don't even need to think about, especially in like if you're keeping it the same goal. Or knowing that you've done this before, set a new goal, set a new challenge, and then you can take this project that you've used and sort of use it as a skeleton where you can alter it and change it. So those are, that's pretty much what pl project planning is. It's just the goal, the organization, ending it, and seeing how you did. So to kind of give you an idea of how that plays out, this is sort of how what I do when I'm going into someone's home. And I'm gonna use the example of a bedroom closet. So I'm meeting with someone. They wanna organize their bedroom closet. So I'm like, okay, we need to set that goal. So I'll ask them a few questions. What do you wanna do with the closet? What do you expect from the split space? What do you wanna get rid of? What do you want to bring in? <coughs> Bless you. So for this example, and speaking to the person when they talked about their closet, they wanted to create extra space for storage. They wanted to donate some, you know, some clothing, repair some clothing and some trash, some things. They wanted to remove the items that don't belong and they wanted to be able to find their clothes right away. So how would I look at that, you know, as far as like setting the goal? I wouldn't just say, oh, I want to organize my closet. The actual goal ended up being having a closet with seasonal clothes together, nothing on the floor, and non-clothes items removed. It made the goal, it made it very simple. We knew what we wanted to do. And in this instance, we would tack it up on the closet. So every time you're in the closet, you won't get distracted. You gotta kind of keep focused on that goal in order to go forward in the plan that starts with that goal. So here we are with the closet. They want the seasonal clothes together nothing on the floor, and all the non-closet items remote. So that sort of set our goal right there. Now that we have the goal,
how do we achieve that? So we kind of need to figure out what tasks we need to do to achieve that goal of the closet with seasonal clothes together, nothing on the floor, and non-closet items removed. Well, the first thing we decided was we had to purge the clothes. So again, that can be a big step for people. They look at their clothes and they go, nah, never mind. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to get rid of them. So what we did is we broke it, broke, it, you know, broke it down into tasks. The first task to get this closet was to take all the clothes out, put them on the bed, and go through them one-on-one, -on -one and just sort them. Winter, fall, spring, summer, I might want to repair this. I really don't want this, but it's in good condition. I want to donate it, and trash. And you just go through each piece of clothing. So that's your first task, <coughs> is to purge and go through your clothing. The next task for this person was to sort through their jewelry. So again, you're not putting, you know, going up to your closet one day and saying, okay, I just have to go through everything. You don't have to go through everything. You're setting these tasks. One day or one hour, however long it's gonna take you, two hours, I'm going to go through my clothes. So that's your first task. My next task would be, I wanna go through my jewelry. And then you just start listing those tasks, always returning to the goal, you know, not, now I need to paint the walls of my closet. That wasn't part of the goal. You know, you don't want to get distracted. We're just getting everything out of the closet and making it a more usable closet. So always focus on that goal, list the tasks that would help you achieve that goal. The next thing is to put these tasks in order. You know, you wouldn't want to clean the floors of your closet until you get everything out. So once you list all of those tasks, take a look at them and see what order you would want to put them in. What makes sense? What makes sense to you based on your schedule, your time, your physical ability, which definitely comes into play with a lot of these plans. I have bad knees, I can't get down on the floor. So whenever I make plans, I have to take that into consideration. So I know myself. So you take those tasks, you put them in order. The next thing you do is kind of break down the tasks if need be. For example, as we looked at the task for this person, we were sorting jewelry, sorting bags, and sorting items, well, what would we do with these things? We have to kind of break it down a little bit and figure out, you know, is, are we gonna to need to find recycling bins? Are we gonna find other, you know, baskets, bins, bags, you know, put other things in? You know, you kind of need to look at each task and figure out, you know, what is this task? Can I break it down even further? You know, like the same thing with the clothes. Some people say, oh, say, oh, I'm just gonna purge my clothes. You might need to break that down a little bit, section them into seasons, if you need to repair stuff, etc. You also need to estimate the time it's gonna take. Again, being honest with yourself. I come from a family of four. My husband and I, two kids. Two of us are very organized, two aren't. So whenever we're doing a family plan, I have to kind of figure out how to manage that time. For something that would take me an hour, might take someone else two hours. So think about that for yourself. How much time will this take? And when <coughs> can I schedule that time? When do I have my most energy? I love to do things first thing in the morning. Some people like to do them late at night. So that also comes into a, you know, estimating your time. If it's gonna take two hours, do you wanna be doing that at 11 p.m.? You know, it's, it's, I know it seems like a lot to think about. When we actually start talking about your plans, this will make more sense. Because these steps will, you know, kind of make sense when you have your own personal investment in it. And right now I'm just throwing out random, you know, examples at you, but once we start breaking down your plans, this will actually make a lot more sense. Um, and that includes estimating costs and supplies. I'm gonna need to buy plastic tubs. I'm gonna need to make a trip to Target. How much is it gonna cost me? So you need to take that into, you know, into your plan as well. And then you set your schedule. You have your goal, you have your major tasks, you have some minor tasks and some shopping to do. So now you need to create your schedule. And then finally, finish the plan and achieve your goal. So it's getting to all that stuff and then having it start. So what I'd like to do right now is to kind of actually jot down some of the, I mean, if some of you brought some ideas with you. If we don't have a lot of ideas, I have plenty of like examples <laughs> that, we can, <laughs> that we can draw from. <coughs> but what I'd like to do is the reason I want to ask if anyone brought any projects or I, you know, things that they want to get done is that if some of them are similar, we can kind of tackle them together. So does anyone have something that they want to work on that we want to kind of map out for you? My original plan was the whole house, but gotcha. you said not to, that, but you had to break it down. That's your plan. So what I'm going to do is what we'll do is I'll show you how we're going to break that down. Okay. Anybody else? Mine is I have a lot of craft supplies that I've got to do something with. I know some have to go, which is fine. 
but I don't want all of them. Gotcha. Got you. <laughs> now I got you there. Anybody else? Um, mine is the house as well. I, I have a plan of moving uh, in five to nine years. Okay. And very good at setting these, these goals and all, but getting it done is just too much stuff. Right. I've lived in the house for 20 years. Right now we're doing a lot of work in the house, so in addition to my stuff, this stuff in boxes and pushed into one corner of one room. And in this, we're like doing a new closet, so that made my ears go up. Um, so it's a lot of the same things. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we have like a whole house organizing, possibly to the point of being able to move, mm -hmm. um, organizing something specific like craft supplies. Anybody else? And I, I would say the whole house too. Um, my husband and I are always like trying to organize and take it room by room. What happens is we have this like pile of moving crap that oh, just yeah. keeps going from room to room. So yeah, we just, you know, I would like to just, you know, see that pile just go on from every room. <clears throat> All right, how do you decide, you know, you have this piece, mm -hmm. you know, it was your mother. You use it maybe Thanksgiving and Christmas because all those generations ago, you used to Thanksgiving and Christmas on mom's table and grandma's table or whatever. Right. And you're looking at this going, when was the last time I really needed a serving tray for 18 people? And, you know, but you're not going to, you don't want to part with it because it's so sentimental so, and it's needed. So one thing I always insist on when I talk to people is you do not need to throw out a single thing. But just get that out of your head. You never ever, I'm not into that whole like sparking your joy and stuff like that. <laughs> I have plenty of things that I will not ever get rid of when it has a home. As long as everything has a home, yes. I keep it. And that's really the reality of it. I've never been with one of those people where, you know, you have, just because everything's on the internet, you have to get rid of every piece of paper in your house. I'm a mm -hmm. paper person. I have file cabinets. I have, like, I have about seven or eight of them in my house. And I use them. They're very organized. They're used for very specific things. But I love my paper. I like being able to go to my file cabinets and find those pieces of paper, those lists, mm -hmm. and things like that. I never, ever expect anybody to throw anything away. We just need to find a home for it. That's really just the reality of it. And sometimes as we're going through the process, sometimes you do realize, sometimes there are memories that are attached to things, and the memories will never go away, but the thing is almost causing you stress. Mm -hmm. Then it might be time to get rid of the thing, but maybe you know, write a little story about it, you know, and file that away. Have a special box for, you know, mementos, but instead of actually having the memento there, have a picture and a story about it. You know, that would be one suggestion, having it, it pared down. You don't need everything, but you don't have to get rid of the memories and the sentimentality of it, you know, as well. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I tell people, put that right out of your head. You don't need to get rid of anything, unless it's causing you stress and you want to get rid of it. I yeah. want to get rid of things because I don't want to move them again. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's a big thing when you're moving. I did that. I used to keep all the magazines I bought every magazine I bought until the second time that I had to move them. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. So I created a plan. Mm -hmm. um, I decided I want to keep what's the, the information that's important to me. And I would spend an hour a night after dinner, sit in front of the TV with a magazine or two, and just kind of go through them and rip out articles. Mm -hmm. I had a stack of articles. That was The first step was to get to a stack of articles. The next part of my plan was create a, you know, separate them out into different topics, and then now they're all still in my filing cabinet. I'm not lugging around those magazines anymore. It took me two moves to realize that. How often do you go into that and look for an article? You know, to be honest, I have a, a whole filing cabinet with all the organizational stuff that I do reference when I'm going to projects. But I would say nine times out of ten, I go to the internet just yeah. because we have the internet. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but, but, I have, but, I, but I have a place for these filing cabinets. It's not in the way. It's clean. It's neat. Yeah. So for me, it's almost emotional that I just just in case the internet crashes, I have this information, you know, you know that mentality. So when your children uh, inherit all that, they're going to take it, put it in a box, and put it out on the road. So they won't, because part of my plan is I have a 21-year-old. She's a junior in college right now. And when she graduates college, she might be moving back home. So that's actually a target date for me to pare down my half. And I've actually, I've been slowly doing that. You know, I've been going through, I used to keep all my old calendars, they're all gone now. Um, I've been going through all my old journals and just kind of ripping out <coughs> important things and getting rid of those. So slowly but surely, I got myself to a point where I'm happy with everything and now I realize I don't want to burden them with that stuff. I'm going to start pairing down that stuff in a slow time frame, you know, because it's still, 
you know, for me, I don't want to get rid of all of my stuff, but it's the reality of, you know. Someone else will do it for you, though. Exactly. Because I just did two houses last year, my son and my father's. Mm -hmm. Four dumpsters out of my father's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my garage is full now. Right, right. So mementos we can't throw away. Oh, yeah. And eventually yeah. they're going to be on somewhere. My son's house, I emptied that out, and roughly the same thing. And my, my they're husband. all valuable things. Right, right. Yeah. To who? That's exactly it. You have to figure, you know, and that's that's a whole other, you know, what's valuable to what person can be a whole other topic for another, you know, discussion. But my husband's, um, when his mother passed away, they were going to move his father down with his brother. They needed to empty out the house. It created so much, the amount of stuff that was in this house created so much anger amongst the kids. They trashed it all. They didn't want to look at it. Yeah. They didn't want to deal with it. They took one or two things and trashed everything. Are they re going to regret it later? You know, who knows? But that's of organizing it does create a lot of stress and anxiety with people and when they're overwhelmed with so much stuff during a stressful time sometimes it's easier just to get rid of stuff which is why you want to try to kind of create these plans now when there's time so that you're not creating more stress for yourself stress for other people possibly anger and resentment from other people yeah i mean it's, it's sad it's my it's kids true. what they would like from you or nothing yeah and i give them pictures and i find them back in my basement Exactly. Yeah. And see, I just said, it's not, it's not what you would like to keep. It's what's going to be passed out and kept. It's not going to be much. Your Thanksgiving plate. I mean, I have a right. couple of turkey plates from my mother. Right, right. I don't think they were used by somebody before then. But yeah. The memories are there, but does, does the stuff really need to be around, you know? And that's, the, that's where some tough decisions have to be made. And then sometimes with these plans, <clears throat> excuse me, they flow pretty quickly, and then you get to that, like, tough decision. And we can, you know, you might have to take like a day or two and kind of break from the plan and say, okay, I need to step back from this. Let me think about this for a few days. And you can write that right into your plan. Go back to your plan and say, okay, we're going to take a break from the plan. Let's take it up in a week because it's becoming too emotional. So I cut desks up with sawzalls and carried them out of the basement piece by piece. Yeah. I couldn't get them myself. Yeah. It's, it's there, a, that was there for about 50 years. Right, yeah. So we had 60 years of accumulation to figure out what to do with it. Right, exactly. It, it can and he be wasn't around the stuff. Right, and that's, and that's it. So, let's, so we're going to get to the plans, and what we're going to address right now is the whole house plan. Because that's for a lot of people. The whole house is just, you know, in any sort of disarray, and you just don't know where to start. So, what the goal would be with that is, it wouldn't be, I want to take care of the whole house. I think the goal for that would be, I want to take care of my house starting with blank. And you would write a room, starting with my bedroom. And so you need to, that's how you make it manageable. You start it with one room at a time. So that would be your first setting the goal. So let's say that's our goal. I want to organize the whole house starting with one room. So that's our goal. And we're just going to spend a few minutes now on these because I want to make, I want to definitely talk about the craft supplies because that's one that's close to my heart. <laughs> and. <laughs> And, the, and also like kind of getting yourself ready for a move, what do you want to move and what you don't want to move. And then also that movable pile of crap. I mean, we all have that, so we're definitely going to get to all that. But let's start with the whole house since that's a big one. And the other question I had is, um, and this might be like a, another like individual thing because I think for some people it's motivating, for other people it's stressful, but how do you feel about um, timelines and target dates? Right. So. I feel that that works for people who it works for. It doesn't work for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to kind of know yourself. Timelines and target dates work perfectly for me. They do not work for my husband at all. Okay. Rewards work for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like for example, we have a pool table downstairs that is currently covered with my daughter's stuff because she's about to head to Disney <laughs> for her internship, which is how I know Laura. <laughs> um, so it's got all of her stuff on it. So my husband's just decided to throw some stuff on it as well. I'm like, Whoosh. and I said to him, I said, as soon as Lily leaves, we need to deal with your stuff. And he immediately just gives me that look. I'm like, look, we don't have to obviously rush it. We're not going to set a timeline. But, you know, in the spring when she comes back, it would be great if we had more space in the basement to put her stuff instead of putting it on the timeline. You know, putting it on the, I'm sorry, the timeline, the pool table. Okay. So how about I give you kind of the winter to clear off the pool table knowing that we're gonna have to clear by May. And if you can get it clear before we visit her in April, well, you'll get to pick where we go to dinner in Disney World. <laughs> so guess who's already started working on that? <laughs> <laughs> so rewards work perfectly for him. Yeah, Timelines yeah. work for me. So that's why you also have to know that as well. Okay. Um, 
you know, and you can get really creative with it, you can get really fun with it, you know, depending how you, you know, want to mess with the person or, you know, say, hey, well, you know, this is, we need, we need to get it done. What, you know, how can we make it work together? You know, we're a team here. How can we all make it work? You know, with the guys in your house, you know, you can sit with them and say, hey, look, we need to get this done. Let's play music. Maybe, you know, make music tie into it, right. you know, and that sort of thing. You know, whoever gets this done gets to pick what we listen to in the house for the next week. Right. <laughs> right. You know, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, you kind of get creative with it, but rewards work, time, you know, time lots of work, work for some people. You just really have to think about, you know, who you're working with on that one. So, we have the whole house. So, we're going to... We have, we're going to start with one room, room. So this one room, we need to think about what are the major tasks in this room. So pick a room in your house that's totally crazy. What, is, what are the things that you want to accomplish in that room? Do you want to, you know, go ahead. Um, um, throw out any unnecessary paper. Right, so you Junk so, mail, all that kind of stuff, old newspapers. So get rid of papers. about my kids' room, making sure everything that doesn't belong in that room is removed from that room. Dishes, <clears throat> other people's clothing, you know, remove, I, remove items that don't belong. <laughs> remove that box that keeps moving around. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that feeling. Well, I'll tell you a funny story about that box with this one woman. I was helping her with her home office, and we did have a box of stuff. She just didn't know what to do with. So we just kept on, like, just throw it in the box, just throw it in the box. And eventually we just had the box. And so we were all done and we're looking at the box. And I said, okay, on our last day, we get to go through the box. And it became so much easier at that point because everything else was done. She was able to take things out of that box and put them away. Or because she's been doing it for so long, she's like, throw it out. Just throw it out. Oh, just throw it out. Yeah. You know, you do get to that point where you really just want to start getting rid of stuff. The only thing I warn with that is if you're dealing with, like, if you're sharing a house with someone, don't just throw things out without somebody else's permission. You can create a really bad situation with that. Make sure everyone's on the same page when it comes to getting rid of stuff because then that you're creating so much more anxiety and possibly more work for yourself when you have to try to get it back. So um, we're getting rid of papers. We're getting items that don't belong out of the room. Um, well, where do you file your spouses? Yep, my husband saves all these different papers. He is not organized. He does not file. He has the downstairs desk in our library office that I would love to remodel. And he also has a little private office off our bedroom that has basically a desk in it that he uses. It's a roll top desk that you don't dare open because all the papers that are in that roll top desk will come spilling out. Plus a full 30 gallon trash bag or whatever the big black ones are right. and half filled one for last year. So he just throws papers in year, like by the year. I cannot physically lift those papers up. Right. How, and then next to the bed, there's just a pile of papers. And it's a good size pile. It's as tall as the night stand. Oh, and it's you. going oh. towards the door. I mean, but you said don't touch your husband, you know, somebody else's house. We'll, well, get, we'll get to that in a moment. OK, yeah. thank you. We'll, we'll definitely address okay. that one. And I don't want to burn the house down to proof. <laughs> That's one way to get That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to burn the house down. Right, yeah. What? You're cleansing it. <laughs> so, big cat and maybe it'll be there. <laughs> close. Um, so, with, with this one room, we have a couple of major tasks. We want to get rid of papers, which will break down, yeah. and we want to remove the items that don't belong. Um, so, really, with, as far as putting those in order, that's an easy step, one of two. I mean, Sometimes, sometimes these steps are needed, sometimes they're not. But we just have two things for this one room. We're just going to leave it at that. Um, estimate the time it would take. That's you know not always the easiest. So what you might want to estimate at this point is like how much time do you want to spend when you first start? And I'm saying like 15 minute blocks, 20, you know half hour blocks, hour blocks. Don't schedule a whole day your first day. You're just going to wear yourself out, and you're not going to want to return to it. Make it manageable. Know yourself. Like I said, for some people, it's 15 minutes blocks. I'm just going to spend 15 minutes on this room today, and that's it. You know, I'm, I'm like maybe sorting through papers, and that's it. And if you do that every day, all of a sudden you're going to see how well it's going. You might want to add time to it, but make your steps manageable. So for this sort of thing, like with getting rid of papers, I would say only you know 15 minutes to a half an hour a day, because any more than that, you're going to everything's going to start looking the same. 
and it's definitely not going to be something that's going to be easy going forward. Um, cost and supplies, you're going to need a recycling bin, you're going to need some boxes, that might be it. You already have the bags. Yeah, you already have the bags, <laughs> exactly. And then it's creating a schedule and due date. Like I said, 15, you know, if it works for 15 minutes a day, I'm going to schedule 15 minutes a day and work on this, but I want it done by the end of, after 30 days, you know, if that if that works for you. Or I want it done at the end of the season, or this might be ongoing, but I really, you know, would like it at least done by the summer. Again, whatever works for you, works for your life and schedule. So now we're ready to, to start the plan. So, yes? I have a couple boxes of paper mm -hmm. that pull bills where, you know, from like the water, water bill or utility bill, mm -hmm. where I put check numbers on it and date I paid it, and that they've stacked up. Mm -hmm. And now to take them individually and put them from shredder would be quite an effort. Are there facilities that would take bulk papers and um, spread them for you? Phoenixville does, um, I think it's once or twice a year, a group shred no, event where well, you can bring papers before. and they shred them. Um, actually, the place I work at Cambridge and Whole Foods, and they do that for the employees only. Um, but we can bring it, we have a, like quarterly, they do shredding and they tell like, the employees, if you have anything, bring it in and we'll shred it. Um, some people, like my husband and I, we, burn, we have a fireplace in the house, we always need paper to burn. Back here, burn pile. Yeah. There are a lot of professional companies when my father-in-law had to move into assisted living, my husband had all the boxes from his his ha his apartment mm -hmm. and there were just so many year old, uh, age old copies of the bills and yeah. things, but he had like 10, 15, 20 of those file boxes and things. There were just too many to even try to, but there was also like you said, there's personal check numbers, there's account numbers, if you did use a credit card they're in there. And this company came, and you watched them take everything out of the basement, lug it to their truck, and then you could watch them dump yeah. it into their truck, so you knew your papers were being destroyed. Yes, I don't do remember that. how much that cost us, but it yeah. was not exceedingly high. But it was, I mean, we had a quarter of our basement corner, you know, filled with oh, yeah. stacks of boxes. And sometimes so it's worth, you know, especially it was worth if it's paying, a lot, it's worth paying. I couldn't have lugged all. Check that. with your bank. Sometimes banks will shred for you. So. Cat Pickering does it? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of resources out there um, to get rid of paper, which is nice. You don't have to, obviously, you don't have to, don't have to throw it in the recycling. You the borough does it twice a year? I think they do. I've seen it post they, in the I'm past. I'm going say in May, I think they yeah. do. Yeah, I know that one they church on the corner. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah, like the, 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 the like our um, utility trash and water bills, sometimes they get, like, the, the leaf pickup schedule, mm -hmm. they'll also let right. you know when they're shredding. If you go on the borough website, maybe they would have yeah, that information. All right, so let's start with the paper, since this seems to be a hot topic. What do we do with all the papers? So first and foremost, as we all know, everything's on the internet. If you're keeping paper, like I, I collect cookbooks, I love my cookbooks, I used to keep binders of recipes. I recently got rid of all of them, because every time we're looking up a recipe, my daughter's on her phone looking it up anyway. We don't need that paper. So I've gotten rid of all those recipes. That was an easy one. Um, and that's kind of what you do. When you, go, when you have your papers, what you do is like take a stack, sort them into piles. I know this is on the internet, I don't need it. It's an article that I've been meaning to re read, it's been sitting there for a year, I'm not gonna read it, I haven't read it, I don't even remember what the topic is, I'm gonna get rid of it. And that's kind of what you do with each piece of paper. You look at, it seems overwhelming, it seems like a lot when you first start. But like I said, once you start sometimes with something, it, it moves. And again, I'm gonna talk to you about like other people's papers. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, I'm talking about just like your papers that you wanna get rid of, the stacks of papers in your own magazine articles, Get rid of it. Everything's on the internet or your local library. You know, <laughs> your li that, that's actually, I happen to use the library a lot. It is a great resource. My husband and I worked at Borders. We bought a lot of books. I don't buy books anymore. I go to the library. And that's also a way I kind of see if I, there's a book that I'm, I took out three or four times. Now I know I can buy it. You know, that's sort of like how I reward myself. But, um, you know, think of it in those terms. So, that, and old bills and, um, things like that. There's certain items that you want to keep for about 10 years, like taxes. But other than that, every, again, everything is kept. When I do my bills every year, everything's imported from the IRS right to my computer. That information, you know, for good or ill, is out there. So you don't need to keep as much as you used to. And you also need to get in that mindset. So as far as getting rid of papers, just start with a small stack, sort them up. Okay, and then think about file folders, you know, like, 
I have a billion of these in my house. I use them so often when I'm sorting. From you know that way, at least to have it visually. Here's all of my papers in their files. Now that I have it sorted out, okay, these are Lily's papers. I'm taking them up to her room. Uh, these are some recipes that I'm not even sure I can find them on the internet anymore. I'm going to take that file, stick it with my cookbooks. So as you see, the papers are starting to go into their proper places. So I'm working with this one woman. Half of the paper in her office was her husband's, and he had his own office upstairs and in the basement. So he had stuff everywhere. So I said to her, you sort through all of your things, take all of his stuff, and put it in his office. That's a separate project unto itself. So that's what she did. We got her office all organized. Her office became an off-limits den. That was it, because it was organized. But then she needed to tackle his office. Well, he dug his feet in. He's like, I'm not going to do anything. And she basically said to him, one night after dinner, she's like, how about that pile that I left in your office? Let's pour ourselves a glass of wine, and let's go through it together. And they did. And they ended up getting rid of everything. It was like instructions for appliances they didn't have anymore. Um, some work papers that he actually needed about five years ago that he didn't need anymore. And then she said, okay, let's try this again next week. Another small pile of papers. Let's just grab some stuff out of your office, pour ourselves a glass of wine, and get it done. So it's sort of kind of creating a relationship with the organizing that you're both on the same team. Even though your offices are separate, the goal is pretty much the same. You want to live in a comfortable house that doesn't create anxiety. All of this stuff is, and you can even explain it this way, all of this stuff is creating anxiety in me. I'm finding it difficult when I go into our room or this office to be comfortable. I would like this whole space to be comfortable. Is there a way that we can work together to make this a more comfortable space? You know, sometimes it's just the language that can kind of get a person on board. You know, so try that a little bit. And then if he is interested in getting started, start with the oldest stuff. The stuff that you really know that it's, it's not even the stuff that's at the bottom of the bag. You know, and, and it's sort of that mindset. If you haven't looked at this in a year or two years, you know, if he's being really stubborn, <coughs> then it's not needed. Or if you really think it's needed, I'm gonna buy you a really nice file cabinet. Let's get everything in the file cabinet. So at least it's not on the floor, but he can keep everything. Does this make sense? Makes sense. I just I know Cameron. Right. It's not. Look, you know obviously you know <laughs> a lot better than I. So you know, try a couple of things, talk about your feelings in the situation. Organizing can be very emotional, right. and mm -hmm. it can create a, a lot of like past anxiety. Um, I don't want to ever get rid of this. I'm never going to make you get rid of it. You know, for some people it's very important. Then you explain that. We're not looking to get rid of anything. We're just making to, looking to make it fit. You know, and sometimes that's a good way of going about it as well, because people just don't want to get rid of things. You know, and that can cover any plan. People just don't want to get rid of things. And that's how you start the conversation. We don't have to get rid of anything. We just need to make it fit. We need to make it so that you can find it. You know, put it on him. We, meet, need, we need to make it so that you feel comfortable in the space, that you can use your desk. You know, that might help as well. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. You know, I can give you my brochure when we're done here. We can always talk about it some more. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> but um, it always, you know, Talking at an emotional level and talking get outside of the room. Don't be in the room when you're having the conversation. Mm -hmm. Don't be holding. We need to get rid of this paper. Let's go out. You know, find a. You know, they talk about that with kids. Talk about it in the car. You know, when it's like you know you're kind of listening to music and you're both stuck. You know, you have, you have to talk. That might be a good time to talk about it as well. Not when you're in the stuff where people can come become very protective of their things mm -hmm. when they see it. So basically, with this plan, as you see, you know, the steps kind of keep going and going. I don't want to focus too much more on this. But with the whole house, start at one room at a time, one closet at a time, one dresser at a time. Do one thing at a time. Make it small. Set your goals manageable and attainable. Then everything else will start falling away. If that, if your husband's office is going to be the toughest thing, save it to the end. Do easy things first. Okay. You know, get them accomplished first. Pick, pick a, a like a linen closet start there and I'm actually gonna then parlay that into the whole moving thing um, if you're looking to move if you're looking to downsize it's actually very sometimes the most difficult thing when it comes to organizing is downsizing so it's the same sort of thing go in your living closet first get rid of yeah I'm sorry bathroom closet because actually I just did this get rid of everything that's expired um, if you have a target date to when you're gonna move you know if that's your goal is organize this house so we can move think of it as um, you know, are you going to move in nine years? So that's that's your end date. You have nine years to do this. 
and then break it down into manageable segments. We're just gonna we're gonna spend two months on one room. Take a break. Two months on another room. Take a break. That might make sense. Um, if you have a lot of stuff that you don't want to get rid of, that's fine. But it has to have a home so you can stay. Think about selling your home. If you go into someone's home and they have boxes and stuff everywhere, you're gonna turn and walk out. That is a real turn. Yeah. <laughs> but you, it doesn't mean you have to get rid of things. Put them in, you know plastic tubs that have you know nice pictures on the outside so you know it looks and that way you can also find the things um, you know I'll use Disney as an example we have a lot of Disney stuff in our house we're not getting rid of any of it but um, my daughter's theme at this Christmas was Disney so we were able to pull all of the Disney stuff in which was great to have it but I knew where to get it all the Disney dishes were in the attic in that one tub the Disney ornaments were in two places once in the attic and one in Lily's room because she has her own ornaments um, we all own Disney t-shirts, but we're able to find them because we're all in our dressers and a little Disney section in our dressers. <laughs> so it's you can fit everything. Um, it's just really, again, breaking down each room. And when you're thinking of moving, think of staging. How would I want this room to look if I was gonna buy this home? Um, your storage spaces, spaces during this time are great. I would say get as much into like your attic and your basement as possible. Make the rooms amazing and then leave the attic and the basement for last thing to do. Those will be overwhelming, but you'll have everything in boxes. Do one box a week. Yeah. You know, really break it down into small, manageable segments that make sense for your time. And if it's overwhelming to start, again, start with one drawer in the kitchen. Yeah, and I've been doing that. What's what's hard for me is, although I want to get rid of stuff, I know I need to get rid of stuff, when I get to it, there's two things. One, it's either an emotional tie to it, mm -hmm. or I, I think everything has a monetary value. I was like, I don't want to toss this out because I can get three bucks here. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So that, I fall into that trap. What I then remind myself is, what time do I have to sit mm -hmm. and put things on Facebook, eBay, you know, wherever, mm -hmm. um, to actually do this? And the answer is, you know, I can do one garage, I can manage one or two garage sales a year. So I have a section in my basement that is only a certain size, and that's where the garage sales stuff goes. Excuse me, if it's more than that, then something's got to come out. <coughs> Sometimes that means... We're, we're really big on donating that. I'm really good on repurposing donating. I don't like to throw anything out. So Goodwill is pretty much a monthly visit for me. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of really great shelters here mm -hmm. in Phoenixville that take things, and then you look to certain organizations that are doing drives. Mm -hmm. I go to Green Drop a lot. Yeah, Green oh, yeah, Drop. Drop's yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Green Drop's Liberty Thrift, too. Oh, yeah, Green Drop's Liberty Thrift. Yeah, exactly. I don't like Goodwill. I don't like right. their policies. Right, exactly. So that's, you know, you have to kind of you know, have a few that you can go to. Mm -hmm. So anything that has a monetary value, give it to someone else that's going to make money off of it. If you're not going to make money off it, set yourself a time. You know, like, like, I don't have time to do it. Right, you really, and you don't. And that's the reality. So someone else will have time to do it. Someone else can make that. That's your gift to somebody else. And what you're giving yourself is the gift of time. Mm -hmm. I tell this, this is like my model, the gift of time and space. And free real estate in my house. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And when you're giving yourself that gift of time and space, you're freeing up your brain to do more awesome and fun things and not having just to look at things. Um, as far as the emotional things and the personal things, that is a tough one. Um, I have a few bins in my attic of things I just can't get rid of. One of them is um, Bloom County comic, mm -hmm. the Penguin Opus. I collected stuffed animal opuses. I have all of them sitting in the top of my attic. I cannot get rid what of them. It's a penguin, stuffed penguins, oh. stuffed animals. Yeah. It's ridiculous, I can't get rid of them. I cannot get rid of them. Um, but they have a place in my attic. Mm -hmm. And every now and again when I go up there, I smile. <laughs> and I don't have to get rid of them, you really don't. But they have a place in my attic and they don't cause me stress. Mm -hmm. And that's really, anything that stays in my house has to have a home and it can't cause me stress. If you're looking at that platter from like a great, great, great grandmother that causes you stress, mm -hmm. you can get rid of it and it's okay. It really is okay. Um, you just have to kind of make yourself feel like it's okay. And in some instances, when you get rid of the big platter and you go out and buy yourself a 25-cent candy bar, it's not so bad. <laughs> that's the reward, you know, for getting rid of this thing that's been taking up space in both my mind and in my hutch. I get a candy bar out of it, it makes me happy. I find a lot of times you forget after it's gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most, yeah. most. And those things that you think you might not forget, that's where like the idea of like taking a picture of it, writing a little story about it, and then you have that memory. And it takes up a lot less space. Oh yeah, I yeah. did that with my daughter's artwork from school. I oh, just took yeah. pictures of it as yep. she brought it home. So I, I knew after a week, 
this is going to take three rooms. Yeah, all the toilet paper roll animals that we had in our house from like all the little programs I did. Yeah, there's a great picture of all of them like lined up. <laughs> and they have that picture now. And they yeah, kept a couple of things. Again, they have a bin under their beds that they can take with them and then they move. But it has a home and we don't have to worry. It doesn't Did you define that? Hmm? Take with them when they move? Oh, take with them when they move. Yeah. yeah. So, My daughter's been going about 10 years and I. Finally, so, I'm getting some boxes. <laughs> My parents are in the room. Oh. <laughs> I currently have nothing at their house. Oh, wow. <laughs> <You're lucky. laughs> but my younger sister does. And my younger sister actually is currently bouncing around the places, so it makes sense. But, you know, it got to a certain point where they basically took the last of the boxes, and one time we went to visit, they put it in our hands and said, yeah. we love you, let's never enter your house again. If it is, it's getting thrown out, and that's it. And you give it to them, and they take it, and that's it. Um, for, again, for, like for my sister, it makes sense keeping stuff there. My dad has it in the basement. She has her own section there. He doesn't have to deal with it. When she's there, every now and again, he reminds her that it's there. Maybe she'll go through a box or two. But at least it's not like sitting in his dining room. It's not taking up any bedroom space. And it works. Yeah. You know, so if it, it works, then it works. Oh, no, my daughter told me after college she's moving back home. I get that. I know there's going to be stuff there for a while. But there will be an end date at some point. That it's my house, you know. Mm -hmm. It's got to go. So I want to address now the craft supplies, as we all have those things. Um, you know, my youngest is 16, and I still have popsicle sticks now, because you never know when you're going to need them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's really the reality. Sure. Glitter, things like that. So for some people, it's going to Ikea and getting a really cute little dresser, and that becomes your craft dresser. Yeah. It's that simple. You don't want to get rid of it. You don't have to, but it needs a home. And you want to be able to find it. So, right. so let's let's set that as a, as a as a plan. So our our goal is to organize our craft supplies. That's a, a simple plan to have. So what are the major tasks? To go through all the supplies and trash things that are just trashy, figure out what needs to be kept, and put like things together. So those would kind of be your three major tasks. Um, you might need to buy a few bins, a few little organizational things. You can get really creative with cereal boxes and turn them into. You know, put, take some old, you know, kids' artwork, some old wrapping paper, kind of open a cereal box top, you know, lay it flat. Oh, oh. Boom, put those in your drawer. You know, yes. you got a, a bunch of, you know, you don't have, none of this ever costs a lot of money. You can get really creative with other things. That's the other thing with, when it comes to storage. Wander around your house. You might have things that will hold other things that you didn't even know about. I have these wonderful, beautiful, like, uh, mugs, you know, that my husband and I get forever from so many places. I have mugs in my closet holding like broken bracelets. I wear a lot of bracelets and some of them are silver. I don't want to get rid of them. I want to sell them. I have a mug that I'm never going to drink out of that's missing a handle. It sits in my closet because it means something to me. Holds the broken bracelets. Other things can hold other things. Right. And then I'm emptying out all of my mugs as well. So think about that with craft supplies as well. Old mugs, shoe boxes, cereal boxes. Shoes. If you have one shoe, like I have these really great shoes, I don't want to get rid of. They're, they hold things, you know. So you can stick a bunch of shoes in, in a drawer. They don't move. You know, if you have the skid-free bottoms, they won't slide around. Put a bunch of pencils and pens in them. Boom, easy storage. Um, but you might need to buy a few things. So you might need to kind of make that part of your plan. Do a little shopping to get some nice storage things that fit. Um, I think it's the big thing. I need either a closet mm -hmm. or a dresser you mentioned yeah. or something. Something on wheels. Instead of it all just sort of. Like exactly. That. Gather, you go around your house, gather up all the craft supplies in one space, and that's your, your project, to go through them all, figure out what you need to keep and what you don't. Bunch them all together, find one home for them. Carts on wheels, which they sell at Michael's sometimes, are really those. cheap. Yeah. I have a bunch of those in my house. Because oh. they're great, you can wheel them away when company is there. Because mm. I'm like, if you notice, I'm in, here I am a professional organizer, all my papers out. I'm a paper person, so I always have papers everywhere. So around my desk, I have two carts that I can throw all of this stuff in and wheel away when I have company. So it looks like my desk is very organized. And very <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of what you need to do. It's sort of, sort of like the junk drawer in the kitchen. You need to have a junk drawer. There has to be a place where you can just throw the pile of crap, which we're going to get to next. Um, sometimes you just need that drawer in the kitchen that has um, fun tack. A couple of twist ties, earring backs, you know, if you have kids and so if you need earring backs. Just, you know where you're gonna yeah. ca get that catch-all. Same thing with craft supplies. You wanna have a space where you know you can just go and get them, but it, it shouldn't be all over the house. You won't be able to find them. Right. So get that one location for it. 
go through everything, get it into that location. And then you can get really creative for labels. You know, you can use your craft supplies to make labels yeah. from the outside of the dresser, <laughs> which I've done. So, and that can get, that can just be fun. You're creating like, and then you might inspire yourself to then use the supplies, because you'll know where they are. So, the pile of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm organizing for people, you end up with that box of stuff. It just gets moved from room to room. It's stuff right. that you're gonna need. It's like bookends or you know, a frame. Yeah. Just things that right. you know you're gonna use. Yeah. So if your major goal is to eliminate this box of crap, mm -hmm. you really need to then you have so then you break it down and that may might be taking a hard look at everything in this box. It has to find a home by blank and set a date. Okay. If it doesn't have a home it's got to go. So if it's really, and you have to be firm with it. If it's really important to some other person, let them know. We're a team here. This is our house. So therefore, everybody needs to participate. And your thing is making it difficult for us <laughs> to continue on with the next part of our plan. You need to make a decision with it. If it's important to them, have them put it in their room. You might have to deal with it later, but at least it's not right. you know, infringing on your space. Um, if it's a piece of furniture that you just don't want to get rid of, you know this is such a great piece of furniture. Um, sometimes it means like, you know, if it's something that's important, maybe even just taking it apart and storing it in its pieces. Um, my daughter's crib, I love the crib that they were in. It's a crib, toddler bed, changing, you know, it was like everything. It's currently apart in the attic, laying flat. I'm not gonna keep it up, right. you know, because I loved it. Same thing with the bassinet. I'm never gonna get rid of it, but I don't want to take up space either. Right. So it had to have a home that it wasn't visible. That's the attic. I'm lucky to have an attic. Sometimes even under the bed. Take right. apart one bed and just put it under another bed. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> but as you see, all it is is like, you know, you kind of, you know, you know you want to do this one thing. You just have to keep breaking it down into things that make sense. And look, I'm an organized person who sets timelines. If you're not, you don't have to follow this, obviously, religiously. But set that goal and a goal that makes sense, that's attainable. You don't want to, you know, um, I want to get my house ready to move because I'm going to move into a mansion. You know, whether you are or not, that might not happen, so that's not going to be your goal. My goal is to make my house ready to move in nine years. Um, so make your goals attainable. Make them that they make sense to you, that they work in your world, and reward yourself at the end. You know, it's very, very hard to organize. It's very hard to start. So even sometimes in that start, you say, hi, I'm gonna organize for 15 minutes tomorrow and I'm gonna buy myself a coffee. Reward, you know, reward yourself. Make yourself good, feel good for your accomplishments. You know, we're humans, you know, just because we're, you know, adults doesn't mean we still don't like that treat. Yeah. So definitely, you know, when you're setting your plans, make the goal attainable, make it, set it in a way that makes sense, break it down so that you're not overwhelmed with it, reward yourself at the end, and then assess it at the end. See if you can work, you know, take this plan, and use it for another room or another space. So I think I've used up almost all of our time. I want to leave the rest of our time open for any other questions. Does anybody have with any of your plans, <coughs> projects, or anything that you want to work on? How do you part with some of those clothes that you pull out of a box or you know, closet and you go, I really like this yes. sweater? So I call those my collected pieces. <laughs> so, and I, I, I have, actually have a friend of mine, she is a fashion collector. And I recently helped her deal. She actually had a whole room. Her, she and her husband have no kids. The extra bedroom was her closet. Mm -hmm. and what she and I do every time I visit is we kind of pare down her closet. We have a rack that is for her collected pieces. I have things that will never fit me again. I have a pair of jean shorts that are ripped up, covered in patches, but they mean so much to me. So I do have a space for my, my pieces, my collected okay. pieces. What kind of space do you use for that? Though I feel like. Um, I actually do you, do you put it in your bedroom? Closet? I have a, I have a dresser drawer. I have a dresser that the bottom drawer that's what it's that's what you use. Yeah. I keep I have my closet. my husband and I have separate closets and they're both small. So I really that needs to be a functioning right. closet. I do that seasonally. That's how mine is too. Um, but I have um, a dresser. You know, that's what those um, I guess under, under the bed thing under bed under bed storage is one. But then I forget. That. Don't you ever forget what you have? <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's just nice about under the bed. <laughs> it's, it's stuff that's important. Like I have some old magazines. Like the, the magazines that I got rid of, I did keep some. Once every few years, I'll pull them out and look at them, but I know that they're there. You know, they're not taking up any space, and they don't cause me stress. And that's right. really the most important thing. Yeah, you know, keep saying that to yourself. Does this cause me stress? Yes. 
you'll get rid of it. You know, but if it doesn't cause you stress, you might have to keep it. If it sparks stress. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do think everything needs to have a place because then I, that's how the boxes well, start yeah. for me. Hey, you know, it's and like, what should I do with it? I don't know. So, 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 so yeah, the attic and the basement are starting to get. So just then, that so then there becomes your next plan, your next project. Well, that's why I mm -hmm. said the whole house. Right. And so <laughs> that's why you do it. That's why you, you do it by the, the rooms that you need to, that you know, set it by order of importance. Your bedroom, your kitchen, your office, those are pretty important. The rooms that you use every day, those are the rooms that you want to start in. But conversely, for some people, that might cause anxiety. The attic might be a good place to start. Clear it out so then you can start putting your stuff in. You know, all the old stuff that's been sitting in the attic that you haven't looked at in 10, 20, 30 years, <coughs> it might be time to get rid of it. Some new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right, this book, there's always stuff. There's always going to be stuff. The point is, you don't want the stuff to stress you out. And that's what these, these sorts of things, you know, the, the idea of like wanting to reorganize a room or a space come into mind because it's starting to stress you out. You just don't want that stress anymore. Is there any other questions, comments? Well, I thank you all so much for today. Yes, I didn't know what you do with all the VHS tapes. So, that's one thing. So the, if you go on the internet, there are actually organizations that, um, that will take them. And like, there's wow. one that I knew out. What, I can't even remember tell you where it was, but for a few years, I don't even know if they're still. But it was a. We have like here in this area, Camp Hill, which is a, a, an area of people, uh, adults with uh, different needs mm -hmm. that live and work together. They're all over the United States, and this one organization actually would you would pay for shipping to ship them your old videotapes. They would disassemble them and recycle them. They would break it down to the recyclable parts and recyclable. So look parts. online for places. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can even like do just go on Facebook and say, "Hey, I have an old box of videotapes. Does anybody want them?" And some people will take them. There's a, a fellow in town who makes notebooks out of such things, uh, <laughs> and would probably out of the boxes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Out of the VHX uh, uh, VHS boxes. So he might want to take them off your hands for you. Yeah. Boom. You're done. With Again, them. some of the places that you donate to will take them because the people that have VHS machines will go there still and take look them. at them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. A quick internet search or a Facebook search or even like hanging, if, again, if you're at the library, there might be a, sometimes they have, you know, how to turn all your VHS tapes into DVDs class and you can do that and you get rid of your VHSs that way. If you're someone like me that likes to organize them, you know, you look for an organization that will take them and break them down into their recyclable right. you know, parts. Right. But, um, yeah. There's somebody that would almost somebody almost for almost everything that you have you want to get rid of. There might be somebody out there. Too. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's uh, an organization called Free Cycle mm -hmm. online, and if you uh, enter Free Cycle every day, you'll see people have. Um, this is on my sidewalk in front of my house. Oh. Yeah. And uh -huh. people um, people there. will. Mm -hmm. uh, I got. I wanted to practice darts. And I kept looking, and one day, sure enough, somebody was getting rid of a dartboard with darts, mm -hmm. and I just had to drive and pick, uh, pick it up. So free cycle online, and um, it's kind of contagious, though, because I get rid of stuff, but I also <laughs> make it. That's how I have everything in my head. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. I get rid of a pile of rocks that way. So I okay. wanted rocks. Yep. Yep. I said, okay, I have rocks in my house. I was going to say, that might be us, because my husband, was, there was a period of time we were looking for rocks and things like that, and he did an online search and found somebody who was, like, excavating their property, had a ton of rocks, and we went and got them, yeah. You and really he just put a, he, he was from Portugal. Oh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, only, the rocks were in Charlestown, though, and uh, he took two loads of rocks away. Right. And I still have a pile, but a little one. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's, and then, you know, things come and go. Like, vinyl is really, like, they were, for the longest time, we were all trying to get rid of our records. Now, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. vinyl. So, you know, you just never know what's going to come and go, what people are going to be interested in. So, something like Free Cycle mm -hmm. or like, like the Facebook Marketplace, some things come and go as far as popularity. You never know. And you just make it easy on yourself. Give it away for free. You know? <laughs> Sometimes that's the easiest. Well, thank that's you. the difficult part. Yeah. Like you said about it, you know, it's worth three dollars to me, but not to go on the internet and try and sell it yeah, or even sell stuff. stuff. Yeah, think about the amount. Of, so if you're going to want to sell something on the internet, think about the amount of time mm -hmm. that you're going to have to invest, mm -hmm. um, and that includes also like taking pictures, possibly having to pay for shipping. Is it really worth the three dollars? Oh, and then all yeah. the people who say they're going to come and get it and never 
Right, and mm -hmm. the frustration mm -hmm. in your time is so being you wasted. Your hour mm -hmm. and have what your hourly rate was and get points. God, exactly. It's like that too. I, I sold some things and people came from Brooklyn. Oh, nice. To buy a, a pipe shredder. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. someone came down and bought furniture and they came from New York. Oh, and my, my neighbor makes a fortune. Makes and a fortune. they sent guys to pick it up. Yeah. They wrapped it all up and put it in a truck and took it to New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Yeah, you just, you just never, you know, if it's easy and you have the time to do it, Put it out there and hopefully someone will take it. If it's not easy for you, you don't have the time, then don't stress about it. Again, the whole idea of this is just to lessen, you're never going to eliminate stress, but at least you want to minimize it a little bit. Okay, we'll be at 8 o'clock, so thank you all so much for thank attending. You. Thank, thank you. you. And I hope I was able to help you all. Yeah. Yes.